Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. So first off, feeling a little sick yet again, so I apologize if my voice kind of comes and goes. Uh, we have been looking at 1 Samuel and Saul and David. <clears throat> We're going to continue with more of that today, uh, specifically in chapters 22, 23, and 24. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what were we looking at? So Saul tries to kill David, David and Jonathan, so their bond. And then, oh, and then also David fleeing as well to a couple different places. So today we're going to be looking at David's followers growing, even though he's fleeing from Saul. So very interesting stuff there. Uh, we'll look at Saul and the priests of Nob, and then Saul uh, pursuing David, and also David, uh, David sparing Saul's life. So really, really interesting stuff. Just again in these three chapters, 22, 23, and 24. So, chapter 22. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their leader. About 400 men were with him. From there, David went to Mizpah in Moab and said to the king of Moab, Would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me? So he left them with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. But the prophet Gad said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judah. So David left and went into the forest of Hereth. Now Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered, and Saul, spear in hand, was seated under the tamarisk tree at the hill of Gibeah, with all his officials standing around him. Saul said to them, Listen, men of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give all of you fields and vineyards? Will he make all of you commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? Is that why you have all conspired against me? No one tells me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. None of you is concerned about me or tells me that my son has incited my servant to lie in wait for me as he does today. But Doeg the Edomite, who was standing with Saul's officials, said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Ahimelech, son of Ahitub at Nob. Ahimelech inquired of the Lord for him. He also gave him provisions and the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent for the priest of Ahimelech, son of Ahitub, and his father's whole family, who were priests at Nob, and they all came to the king. Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahitub. Yes, my lord, he answered. Saul said to him, why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword and inquiring of God for him, so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me as he does today? Ahimelech answered the king, Who of all your servants is as loyal as David, the king's son-in-law, captain of your, of your bodyguard, and highly respected in your household? Was that day the first time I inquired of God for him? Of course not. Let the king accuse your servant or any of his father's family, for your servant knows nothing at all about this whole affair. But the king said, You will surely die, Ahimelech, you and your father's whole family. Then the king ordered the guards at his side, Turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because they too have sided with David. They knew he was fleeing, yet they did not tell me. But the king's officials were not willing to raise a hand to strike the priests of the Lord. The king then ordered Doeg, You turn and strike, the, strike down the priests. So Doeg the Edomite turned and struck them down. That day he killed 85 men who wore the linen ephod. He also put to the sword Nob, the town of the priests, with its men and women, its children and infants, its cattle, donkeys, and sheep. But Abathar, son of Ahimelech, son of Ahitob, escaped and fled to join David. He told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord. Then David said to Abathar, that day, when Doeg the Edomite was there, I knew he would be sure to tell Saul, I am responsible for the death of your father's whole family. Stay with me. Don't be afraid. That man who is seeking your life is seeking mine also. You will be safe with me. Chapter 23. When David was told, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Kalia and are looting and thresh the threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack those Philistines? The Lord answered him, Go and attack the Philistines and save Kaliah. But David's men said to him, said to him, Here in Judah we are afraid. How much more then if we go to Kaliah against the Philistine forces? Once again David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Kaliah, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. 
So David and his men went to Kaliah, fought the Philistines, and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Kaliah. Now Abathar, son of Ahimelech, had brought the ephod down with him when he fled David to David at Kaliah. Saul was told that David had gone to Kaliah. And he said, God has handed him over to me, for David has imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. And Saul called up all his forces for battle to go down to Kaliah to besiege David and his men. When David learned that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abathar the priest, Bring the ephod. David said, O Lord, God of Israel, your servant has definitely has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Kaliah and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Kaliah sur surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord, God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will. Again, David asked, Will the citizens of Kaliah surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, They will. So David and his men, about 600 in number, left Kaliah and kept moving from that place to place. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Kaliah, he did not go there. David stayed in the desert strongholds and in the hills of the desert, desert of Ziph. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. When David was, was at Horesh in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horesh. The Ziphites went up to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds at Horesh, on the hill of Hakalia, uh, south of Jeshimon? Now, O king, come down whenever it pleases you to do so, and we will be responsible for handing him over to the king. Saul replied, The Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and make further preparations. Find out where David usually goes and who has seen him there. They tell me he is very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with definite information. Then I will go with you. If he is in the area, I will track him down among all the clans of Judah. So they set out and went to Ziph ahead of Saul. Now David and his men were in the desert of Moan, in the Araba, south of Jeshimon. Saul and his men began the search, and when David was told about it, he went down to the rock and stayed in the desert of Maon. When Saul heard this, he went into the desert of Maon in pursuit of David. Saul was going along one side of the mountain, and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. As Saul and his forces were closing in on David and his men to capture them, a messenger said to Saul, saying, Come quickly, the Philistines are raiding the land. Then Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to meet the Philistines. That is why they call this place Salah Hamaleketh. And David went up from there and lived in the strongholds of Engedi. Chapter 24. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the desert of Engedi. So Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there, and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscious stricken for having cut a corner off his robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lift my hand against him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul, and Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My Lord the King. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lift my hand against my master because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. Now, Understand and recognize that I am not guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. 
May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers come evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. Against whom is the king of Israel come out? Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it. May he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have now just told me of the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you treated me today. I know that you will surely be king, and the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my father's descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. So David gave his oath to Saul, and Saul returned home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. So looking at that, it's really interesting how David is hiding in a cave. And we see that a couple times, just David hiding here and in different places. And yet God brings the victory to David. That's really interesting, and I guess that's that's probably my prayer for you, Rayleigh, I think uh, today's prayer, is that you recognize that if you're in God's will, God can do anything. He can bring you victory even when you are purely, and most most definitely, when you are purely relying on him. When you don't think that victory can be had, David is just sitting in a cave, and men are coming to him. Um, God is bringing him victory through that. So don't doubt what God can do. Anyway, I guess that's my my prayer for you today is that you recognize God can bring you victory in circumstances that you wouldn't even think of. Anyway, know that I love you, that I'm praying for you. For anybody else watching, know that I appreciate you so much as well. I'm looking at this now. It feels kind of cattywampus. Anyway, hopefully uh, the sickness passes soon. Again, sorry for the voice. Know that I appreciate you all so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.